Hey guys, back to do another episode on my indoor micro grow. And uh, what we're looking at here is the ambient temperature in my apartment. And you can see it's 66 Fahrenheit and it usually hovers around the mid 60s. And other issue we have during the rainy season, especially during the winter in Oregon, is very high humidity. Uh, uh, if you can see that, it's 90% right now. Uh, so I constantly have to have like air flow in uh, through my place and that obviously will cool it down outside It's like 47 right now, I think But I like to keep it cool uh, in my place um, Saves on electricity and The only issue with it is for growing cannabis this is are not the ideal conditions at all both of these would cause problems and as you guys saw what I typically grow are more smaller compact more bonsai type plants and these are part of the reasons for that now the humidity I can control in my micro tent fairly easily just with fans and so um, that's not much as much of an issue I can get it down to maybe 70 something uh, but it could definitely be improved uh, but the temperature is really what's lacking from more vigorous growth I believe and you can see that manifested in the purpling of the stems it still grows fairly fairly good uh, flower as you guys saw with our recent harvest um, but uh, it's something that we can definitely improve on so with that in mind, I was thinking, okay, so how can I increase the temperature in my grow? And if you guys saw during our winter grow in the secondary cover in the greenhouse, I used that thermal mass heater made out of uh, cinder blocks uh, powered by a candle. And I was saving in back then, you could do the same exact thing and it might be even more efficient if you actually provided the heat with a light bulb. And so when I was thinking about this problem I had, I thought, okay, well, let's try a similar approach with a very small thermal mass heater that I can use indoors in my micro tent, uh, kind of a little DIY project, and um, uh, try that same kind of concept. And so what I was thinking about is when I had my chicken brooder, which is like a little chicken pen for raising uh, young chicks, uh, I had uh, a heat source for them, and I went through a couple different options. I started with, you know, regular incandescent, and then those red ones, and the kind of more UV colored ones for reptiles. And actually, by the way, uh, for raising chickens, it makes a huge difference if you, they have natural light cycle or they have light stimulus during night. It uh, really screws up with them if all they get is sunlight and that's what I wound up doing is putting them on the windowsill and changing to a different heat source that didn't provide any light whatsoever and it really changed their behavior and they're just much better little chickens anyway so after trying a bunch of those really expensive light bulbs that a bunch of them burn out a bunch of them were just crap anyway what I wound up settling was one of these ceramic heat emitting ceramic heat emitter light bulbs well not a light bulb but it has the light bulb socket and uh, what you can see all it is is actually a coil of metal encapsulated inside of the ceramic cover so kind of similar to hot place so when I was thinking about this whole uh, project for my micro tent I was thinking maybe even one of those uh, USB powered uh, coffee cup warmers as a heat source, but this one is significantly more powerful. This is a uh, 60 watt, I believe. Yeah, 60 watt, and they also come in 100 watt, I think, commonly, maybe even higher. And so, as far as the chickens went, this was such a great improvement. Um, I used it, I think, for two years straight and still have it obviously and never had to change it so it was very much worth switching to that along with the improvement from not having the light <clears throat> so uh, when I had that I had it just in this little socket here 
you can see I just wired up this extension cord I had spare and so that worked out great for the chickens uh, they would come up and rest underneath of it I had it like positioned like this uh, horizontally and you know they would come around it so to functionalize it further back then even with the chickens I added uh, <clears throat> one of these dimmer switches and you can see I just marked it off from 0 to 10 to give it a scale and then uh, more recently this was all kind of hardwired into the brooder previously but more recently I just uh, added the other half of this extension cord and another spare plug I had uh, so that I could just plug in whatever I want into there and control it. So starting from this, what I think I'm going to do is, first of all, just check uh, with my kilowatt reader and my IR gun, the temperature relative to the wattage of the actual surface of this uh, ceramic heat emitter. So it goes up to 60 watts, and with the low wattage LEDs I'm using now, uh, you know, I could run it all the way up to 60, I guess, in the really cold parts of the winter, but I'd rather probably stick around 20 and 30 and see if I can make that work. Um, and that's the whole thing, is that when I use my HID lights, I have a 100 watt metal halide and a 70 watt hypersodium. In my micro tent, those things put off so much heat that I actually have to evacuate it to keep it cool enough in there. Um, but with the LEDs, it's the opposite. They don't put out really any heat at all, and so my temperature in the grow tent is pretty much what the ambient temperature is. So uh, that's what got me going on this project, and so I think what I'm going to do is add once i measured uh, just the bare temperature i'm going to add some other thermal mass here to increase that and um, help it emit more heat into my little grow area because just on its own like this even if i have a fan blowing all over it i don't think it's really going to be enough all right so here are the results i only went up to 30 watts which you can see in this first column here uh, then we have amps and here we have a setting column which is the setting on this dial here and the max temperature in Fahrenheit here so uh, this bulb has a hot spot right here which is significantly hotter than the outer areas another reason I want to increase the thermal mass is to help dissipate that better so uh, what you can see here is that we go from about 63 to about 200 Fahrenheit in that hot spot area uh, going up to 30 watt. So we have good control of it using the stimmer switch and uh, but still even I run it at 100 watt at 200 Fahrenheit I don't think it will be enough so what I think I'm going to do is add a cage of hardware cloth I have here. So this is the half inch. So like this. And then I'm going to fill this with rocks. Just uh, like I did in that uh, cinder block thermal mass heater we used outside. And so the rocks will be my added thermal mass. I think I'll also put some down here to give it better stability to lower its center of gravity. That way with this extra extra height, it's not going to tip over. In fact, you know what? I might actually just put it on a larger wooden platform. And then, uh, yeah, so it's about a foot high total here which is just above the height of my two gallon pots. And so remember the effective range of one of these heaters is gonna be above the heat zone. 
below it it's not gonna really heat much in fact uh, I can touch even though this top part is still quite hot I can touch this part here and it's not really hot at all because it only heats this upper area so in that same line you could probably just put a brick on top of it or a ceramic tile or something like that uh, and dissipate the heat like that especially if you wanted to make uh, a heater for maybe a seedlings or clones and uh, just heat it underneath gently with uh, you know a low setting so lots of function I think here possible with this so let's get going on putting it together okay so I think what I'm going to use for the board is this old cutting board I'd line around that I've been meaning to get rid of I have no other real use for it so it's not too wasteful for me to cut it up and I really don't like wooden cutting boards anyway so what I did was I took this plan marker and I put two holes in it and all I did was I just lined this one up in the center and I made this one about an inch out not measuring anything here just eyeballing it and the other thing I did was using my soldering iron I made these two grooves to line up with the cord there so all I did here was I put this uh, spare soldering tip I have for really fine work into one of them and then the felt tip pen into the other one and drew out a circle here that I'm going to cut out as my base. Alright so there you go I cut out the base damn near killed me I cut this out by hand and I guess this stuff is like laminated but bamboo, you can see that grain there, it's so freaking hard. Anyway, so and then I just tacked it down with a couple screws, so it's going to be our base. So as far as the cage goes, this is just a scrap piece I had laying around and you can see how I connected them with the cage material itself. I just cut the ends here with a little bit extra piece and use that piece to wrap around to join them together. And this is just a scrap piece I had and so it just happened to be kind of a correct size. You might want to consider making it uh, to go to the wood base a little bit further out than I have it here and then tacking it down. I'm going to keep it like this because I think with the rocks being at the bottom I have a feeling that it should be able to support itself here. So I got some gravel here, just from a gravel road, and I washed it. Uh, you could also use river rock. And then I went ahead and sieved it and screened it with a sieve made out of the same hardware cloth. So let's go ahead and put the ceramic heat emitter in. Um, or should we fill the bottom first? No, let's just go from the top. I'm just trying to make sure it stays centered. So what I'm trying to do is fill up the lower base area here first. Okay. Um, I might fill it all the way or I might leave a gap. Again, that lower bit doesn't really heat. So if we can... Alright guys, so there it is all put together. You can see we filled up the lower area completely. Can't really even see the heat emitter anymore, um, and it 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 is holding itself together. So you can see if I lift it up from the top and shake it, it's not gonna fall apart because the rocks here pushing up against the heat emitter. And uh, it's also quite sturdy, even being quite tall. It does has, still have a very low center of gravity. It's it, it's not gonna tip over easily. And even if it did, it would just be resting on this point and this point and this hot area in the middle wouldn't be touching anything. So I've been running at it. Whoops, we just went up quite a bit there. So you see I can control it to whatever wattage I want. So we've been running it at 30 watts. So let me just set it back. And that would be a great setting if that would work for me. I'm trying to keep my energy allotment to 100 watts total. So if I ran the heater at 30, 
That would leave me 70 for the fans and the light fixture. I can probably get away with 10 watts for the fans. And so I'd have 60 watts to play around with for the lights, which would be great. So yeah, there you go. So the other thing I was thinking if you needed to, you could probably use this to increase your humidity a little bit by just spraying some water on it and having it evaporate. Um, out here, that's not an issue. You can see we've always got really high humidity, especially during the, the rainy months. But some of you guys may be in the high deserts, Eastern Oregon or Colorado or places like that. Uh, maybe this could be of use to you. I don't know, maybe you can rig up some DIY dripper or something to add water. You know what, that just gave me an idea. Because this thing here is just like what you have in a sauna, right? It's just a bunch, it's a heating source with a bunch of rocks on top is what you have in a sauna and then that heats the room and then you dump some water on top of it and that flash evaporates it to steam and that further increases the humidity and the temperature in the sauna to get it to those high temps. Huh. <laughs> What do you guys think? A two by three by three foot sauna <laughs> in my micro tent? I wonder if that would work. Okay, well, don't try this at home because I didn't seal up the the socket there. So, you know, we'll probably make a short here, but it's not gonna be the end of the world. Let's see if we can, oh, yeah. Oh yeah, steam. Awesome. Anyway, <laughs> could you imagine me getting into a, my tent and making that into a solid? That'd be great. But anyway, I think this might work out. Again, I have a 2 by 3 by 3 foot, so let's see what is that. Uh, it's 6, uh, 18 cubic feet. I think this might actually work. I'm not sure if we can do it at this wattage or we'll have to go up to the max, which is 60. Oops, wrong way. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is uh, just keep track of the ambient temperature, which you can see is 63 right now. The temperature that's going to be inside of my grow tent with this running. And I will keep track of those two relative to what wattage setting I pick. And that will make me basically a new calibration curve similar to what we have here. That will allow me to say, okay, at 30 watts, I can keep it at 70, at 40 watts, 75, so on and so forth. Because this isn't really useful at all right now. All right, so there you go. Um, if we're being really critical, we should think about what the alternative of this would be. So I would think it would be something like this small space heater I have here. And this one is digital, so you can um, have it turn on and off when it reaches a certain temperature. But I think this would actually be o overkill for that small tent. It's also about twice the surface area it takes up, and every square inch counts in my grow, so... Um, I think it would just be too much. And let's see... Where's the... Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 1500 watt uh, Yeah, that would be way too much So I think that's gonna be a good option the only thing that's really left is to wire in a Temperature controller into here and so they would turn on and off automatically and keep a stable temperature without you doing anything And then you have a real nice piece of DIY maker type of automation for a micro grow so let me guys, uh, let me know what you think in the comments below about this little uh, thermal mask heater I just made. And I'll keep you guys informed on the results and how it turns out. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one.